What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of GQ Recommends. Today we're going to be walking you through how to wear sandals, which ones to buy, and the three categories that are really worth your time. The dress sandal, closed toe mule, and the classics. The dress sandals. First of all, they're mostly going to be made out of leather. They're probably going to have a metal buckle and they're going to feel heftier and more substantial all around. So they're going to feel in your hand and on your foot more like a loafer or a dress shoe. So it's probably not a shock to hear that like these types of sandals were super popular in the 60s and 70s. They've been having a serious resurgence and I really dig them because they are doused in retro vibes. You'll kind of feel like a Hollywood A-lister from like the 70s who's vacationing off the Amalfi Coast. It's a great vibe to indulge in. I like dress sandals. I'm wearing a pretty dressy pair of fisherman sandals right now. There is an element of casualness to a sandal, obviously, by nature, and it's kind of a cool paradox to pair your sandals with a suit. Hirachis are a super traditional shoe. They have that level of pliable comfort, but they also cover the entirety of your foot so your toes aren't exposed if you have any hangups about that. So you wanna be a little bit careful when you buy a pair of Hirachis because there are a lot of brands making slightly shoddier versions that won't hold up for very long. Nisolo is a cool brand because it's based in the US, but it actually owns its own factories in Peru, close to the area where the Hirachi originated, and the quality lasts. So the next pair that we're gonna talk about are from Grenson, which is an English storage shoe brand that actually makes the pair of sandals I'm wearing right now. And the difference between these and the Hirachis is, Hirachis, by definition, tend to be a much slimmer silhouette, um, so they're a little bit dainty. This is not. This is a decidedly chunky silhouette with a fairly massive ripple sole that you can see here. So if you have an outfit that you would normally wear like a pair of docks or a hardy pair of derbies with, you can swap these in instead and you'll look far more summer ready. What's cool about these sandals, which are from Camper, when you think of sandals, at least leather ones, you might think of a pretty traditional gladiator sandal. This is almost like a freakified riff on it because it's got that chunky sole again and it has the ridged leather, but it doesn't extend far up the leg and it's an altogether far more streamlined silhouette. If you're wondering where you would wear a dress sandal, you can definitely wear one with all the normal things you would wear a dress or shoe with, like a suit or a button down and trousers. But I also think they look really cool with like a pair of cut off jean shorts and a flowy button down and just like a tank top and a simple gold chain. There's a reason they've been around so long and it's because they're timeless. They're not going anywhere. They're a safe investment. If you can wrap your head around the idea of buying a sandal that you'll actually wear to dressier occasions, start with one of these. A uh, mule is basically a sandal that is closed at the toe, but open at the back. It's as simple as that. Mules are huge right now. And who's to say why? There's probably myriad reasons, all sorts of different factors that are working together to contribute to their rise. First up, let's talk about these absolutely absurd mules from Prada. They come in the full rainbow spectrum of hues. They're made out of this really sleek, almost matte rubber. They're super comfortable. If I had to pick one pair of mules pop off in the NBA tunnel when the season starts next season, it would definitely be these Prada joints. These are not a viable dress sandal alternative. I have a feeling that if you have the money to buy a pair of these, you're probably pretty comfortable wearing them around the house as a shoe that you don't do anything other than get the mail or run to the bodega in. Um, but they would also look really cool with like a pair of baggy flare jeans and like a fuzzy striped cardigan. Super cozy vibes, but again, if you're looking for a, a pretty splashy logo hit, these will definitely do the trick. Marnie's take on the silhouette is much sleeker and a little bit more discreet because it's cut from this kind of handsome pebbled grain leather type of material you might see on a pair of brogues or more high-end dress shoe. Which I think makes it way more versatile and, and also way more conducive to dressing up. I would wear these with like a super slouchy suit and like a, a threadbare white tee, honestly. Like if, if you're familiar with 
isumiyaki and you like the, the pleats pants that he makes, you should buy the jacket version too. Throw on like a, a Uniqlo U box fresh white tee and just a pair of these and you're set. If you're looking for a pair of sandals that you can pretty reliably wear almost year round, if you're a diehard sandal enthusiast looking for a way to get the most wear out of your favorite pair of shoes, Mule is a solid way to do it. So Birkenstock basically makes two pairs of shoes that it's most famous for and that we would consider essentials. The Arizona and the Boston, which are the mules that we're holding right here. They come in a bunch of different styles, a bunch of different colors. Most people probably don't think of Birkenstocks and the Boston in particular as a formal shoe, but the leather kind of gives it an element of polish that you could conceivably wear with a suit. Seth Rogen is a big fan of Birkenstocks. He wears them with more casual fare like t-shirts and chinos, but he's also been known to rock Birkenstocks or Birkenstock S silhouettes on the red carpet. And the reason why it's such a staple of so many people's closet is because it's a pretty great rounded toe that's bulky but not overly cumbersome. The last pair we're gonna talk about in this category is the Reebok Beatnit, which is a super popular mule style that's just about everywhere right now and for good reason. So there's a few things to call out about this particular mule. First of all, it's got that telltale padded strap in the back. There's no uncomfortable fabric jostling for real estate with your ankle. It's got a quilted upper, which is super comfortable and also deceptively sturdy. And it has that zigzag, almost ripple-like sole at the bottom. Really comfortable, durable, great as a house shoe, but definitely one like the Birkenstock that you can wear out of the house as well. If you wanna rock these as a more traditional mule, you totally have the option. You can just simply flip up the strap and leave them as is. I think I like them better with the strap down, but the functionality is there if you choose to wear them like that. I, I would call him like Diplo a modern day freaky mule connoisseur. I don't think he's met a weird mule that he doesn't like. He really doesn't discriminate when it comes to where he wears his mules. He'll wear them anywhere, which is how a good pair of mules should be treated, no matter how much you paid for them. This is a great example because it's, it's the benefit of what a mule has to offer in one outfit. So Diplo could have easily worn a pair of sneakers here, but because he's wearing a mule, it adds this sort of like, rolled out of bed, don't really care, but everything else still looks pulled together and the mule is a huge component. We're going to walk you through a few classic styles that will never steer you wrong. Well, we're starting with Birkenstocks because they're kind of the first name in the sandal game. They've been around in one form or another since the late 1700s, um, but their signature style, the one that you probably recognize that you're looking at right here is the Arizona. That was introduced more recently in the early 1970s. Birkenstocks are specifically engineered to be comfortable, so they'll offer all the support you need for whatever you're doing this summer and beyond. It shouldn't be a surprise that Bob Weir wears Birkenstocks. He wears them all the time, very consistently, but you don't have to be a rock and roll legend to pull them off. Their versatility naturally lends themselves to a bunch of different styles, so you have people like Devin Booker, who's somewhere in Italy in a very tonal, all-white fit, and he looks fantastic. And then you also have people like Chris Pine who pairs his with slim dark jeans and looks equally great too. So if you'll notice also, both of these fellas are wearing pants, which might seem a little bit unusual if you're wearing sandals as well. But the good thing about sandals nowadays is that you can actually wear them with pants and Birkenstocks will look cool whether you're wearing them with shorts, loungy linen pants or slim dark denim. Teva has been around since the early 80s and they initially got their start catering to people who are outdoors a lot and uh, tend to spend most of the day on their feet. So the second you feel them, you can tell that they have a really springy footbed, but the footbed is also backed up with a Vibram sole, which is like the first name in high quality footwear finishing. So you're getting really solid traction and a super durable finish for not a ton of money, and they're going to help you stay comfortable no matter where you wear them. So like Birkenstock, they've got a lot of functional bona fides, but now they've also sort of elevated themselves into the realm of high fashion, and for good reason, they look pretty sick. There's this growing realization that everything can be a fashion item if you style it the right way, or if you style it in a way that feels distinct to you. So a perfect example of this would be a guy like Tyler, the creator, who's 
far and away one of the most stylish dudes on the planet, and he routinely wears these with outfits you would normally wear with a pair of sneakers or loafers, and he looks sick. He wears baggy cuff denim and white socks, or a puffer jacket even, which seems like a paradox, but he consistently pulls it off because he doesn't treat them like sandals. He treats them like any other shoe in his rotation. Socks and sandals, it's a contentious topic. Personally, I'm all for it. I really only ever wear my sandals with socks and it's not because I have gross feet. Socks and sandals is a dope combination. I think they look super fresh. It's a little bit unexpected. It feels counterintuitive because it kind of is. You're almost negating the point of allowing your toes to feel the breeze by swaddling them in a pair of socks. Nike, which as you probably know, is like the first name in performance gear, elevated it to its logical conclusion. It makes a super trail ready sandal that kind of builds on what Teva helped establish and then levels it up considerably with a bulky ridge sole and this bungee pull tab here that lends it all a very technical corp oriented finish. First and foremost, these look sick. That's always the most important component, in my opinion. The sole that you have here is ridged. It has a ton of durability and traction. You'll be able to scale whatever peaks you encounter and overall look really good doing it. So if you have a few more dollars to spend on a pair of sandals that is super celeb loved, in fact, then Sui Coke is a great option. They're a Japanese brand made with really high quality materials. And they look great too. Um, it's kind of like a nice middle ground between the Teva and the Nike model that we were talking about because you get a lot of the same functionality. There's that Vibram sole again there, though it's, it's slightly different than the one that Teva uses. They feel more elevated and, and they feel that way too. Like if you hold them in your hand, they've got more heft to them. So they're not as lightweight as a pair of Tevas, but they're slightly dressier than the Nikes that we were looking at earlier. So the next silhouette that we're gonna be talking about are slides, which you're probably familiar from your dorm room days or from the myriad fancy versions that people like Kanye West at Yeezy make now. But the pair that I'm gonna talk about today is from Camper. What I think is cool about them is that they have a hefty ridge sole, not unlike some of the more trail ready options we were talking about earlier, but they have these crisscrossing straps right here that are made out of a super sturdy cotton twill. You can see it's kind of a nubby pattern and they're really handsome overall. I really dig this pair in, in the cotton twill, but they also come in leather, which is a really cool move if you're trying to dress up your sandals, which yes, is something you can definitely do. Sandals have been around for a long time, and the silhouette that people have been wearing for, for decades, centuries maybe, looks a whole lot like this. When we're talking about classic sandals, these are about as classic as you can get. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you very much for tuning in, and hopefully we answered some of the questions you have about what sandals to buy and how to wear them. I think my personal favorite was probably one of the Sui Coke pairs that we referenced earlier in the classic section. If you liked any of the pairs we talked about today, be sure to check out the links in the description below. They're all gonna be right there for you. Thanks for watching GQ Recommends, and as always, catch you on the next episode.